Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at some of my predictions from the start of the season and just how things have changed. As you can see here, it's totally different. But I'm also going to be making some fresh predictions uh, for the end of the season and certain teams that I can see moving. There's so many competitive teams in the championship, it's really hard to call, but I'm going to try my best to make some predictions. A lot of you won't agree with me, I know, so that's why I want you to let me know down in the comments what you think I've got wrong, who you think your top two is going to be, your top six, who's going to win the playoffs, and of course, your bottom three. But before we get into it, here's a quick shout out to our sponsors over at OneFootball. Just want to say a big shout out to our friends over at OneFootball. It's the ultimate platform for football fans across the world with everything you need from scores, fixtures, player stats, articles and social posts all in one place. If you want to check it out, you can download it using the first link in the description. Okay, so if we take a look at this straight away, you've got Fulham and Swansea who are in the top two, neither of which are in the top two. Moving down to the playoffs, I put Forest, Leeds, Albion and Reading in there. Reading, probably the only really bad shout out of that. There's always going to be a team that sneak in the playoffs that you probably wouldn't expect to. So yeah, it is, it is quite an interesting one um, and it all still could change so much um, over the next few months. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reset this and, um, and I'm going to redo my predictions. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Make sure you hit that like button. Let's see if we can get 100 likes on this video. And uh, as always, I'm probably going to get it massively wrong. But I just like to have a little recap halfway through the season, whatever. We're getting to the new year and I'm like, okay, let's have a look. Let's see if we can make some predictions. And then maybe I'll be right with one of them. Who knows? Remember guys, if you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you know every time that I upload. So I'm going to start around the bottom and I do think Luton Town are going to finish bottom of the league. They're currently second bottom of the league with 21 points, uh, sat in 23rd place, but I do think they're going to drop down. You, you can start to, at this point of the season, see which teams are really going to be around there. Stoke are joint on points with Barnsley and Luton at this stage of the season. Who would have thought that at the start of the season? You can't blame me for that. Where did we put them at the start? We had them to finish to just survive. Um, we, we thought they were going to have quite a quite a tricky season. I think I did that prediction episode a few games in, so they were already starting to have a poor start, but I just didn't see them growing into it. As you can see, Huddersfield and Derby are sat just above Stoke. Can't imagine what it's like be, being a Stoke or a Derby fan at the minute, especially as Derby were uh, so close to getting in the Premier League last season. I, I do think um, the bottom three is going to be the same as it is, just in a different order. I think Wigan will pick up a few points, um, push towards that um, safety zone, but I don't think they're going to have what it takes. It could go to the final day or something, but the teams that are sat outside that relegation zone are so strong, I can't see them dropping into the bottom three. And if they did, it would be a big shock. Probably the biggest team outside of the bottom three at the minute that are in danger are Charlton Athletic. I really I really have confidence in Charlton this season. They do look set to be quite comfortable uh, this season in terms of avoiding relegation, and I do think they'll avoid that relegation zone. Um, it's going to be difficult for any one of these three to get out of it. They're going to have to really push on the better teams in this league and if one of them gets out of it then it'll be a, a shock. Stoke are still having a difficult time adapting to the championship. They finished 16th last season and they'll do well to uh, to match that. I don't know what's going wrong. It's really It must be really difficult being a Stoke fan to be fair after I mean, I feel your pain, but it's just the immediate drop down into the championship, which is such a fire pit. It's so hard to actually get out there because there are so many competitive teams in there just striving to get into the Premier League. And uh, as you can see with Stoke, it's a prime example. It's hard to adapt. Um, add Huddersfield to that mix as well. I can see them just squeezing into mid-table. They're picking up points. Um, they're, they're, they're looking like they're adapting a little bit. And uh, the likes of Carl and Grant as well will pull them through um, as long as they can keep hold of him, keep him fit. They've got some solid players there and I feel like they've got a bit more of an identity to the way they play. I'm going to put Derby just behind them. They're having a difficult season again. It's just they had such an unbelievable season last season. Um, they had a lot of low knees. They had Frank Lampard. There was a, a good energy around the club but since Lampard left, since the low knees have gone back, it's been really hard to find their own identity and that's the danger when you do take uh, these quality low knees on board. Then they're, they're never actually your players. Um, so it's it's obviously proven with with the way Derby are playing at the minute, uh, but I still think that they can they can do well. They just need to regroup, refine refine their identity, and, and push on potentially next season. But I can't see them getting anywhere near the playoffs personally. 
I'm going to put Charlton in just survive as well. I do think they'll be dragged back down into that relegation mix, but I think they've got a bit more about them this season um, than, than Wigan, Barnsley or Luton do. It could end up going very late on um, to the last day perhaps, but I just feel like they've got a bit more about them. And, and, and Wigan, Barnsley and Luton, as much as I respect Luton as well in the way they've tried to play sometimes, I, I just feel like they're, they're lacking the resources. Charl There's always one team that comes up and tends to do well. Charlton had a great start to the season but it's just sort of levelling out for them now. I do think they'll have enough uh, to survive though, definitely. I'm going to put Millwall in 13th, sat quite comfortably in mid-table. Gary Rowett has done a really good job with Millwall, I think. Rowett did it with Blues, you know, and Millwall is, is a similar kind of club, I feel, in the way that they try to play and in the way Gary Rowett's philosophy uh, is. I, I feel like they really suit each other. He's never going to have the resources to really make a proper push of things. I think he'll be happy with mid-table. Uh, next up is Birmingham City. I think we're going to sit around 12th, um, so I'm going to put us in the mid-table zone. I think we are still trying to find an identity to the way we play at the minute, Blues. And, and we're sort of stuck between two at the minute. The problem with, with Blues the, that we thought at the first half of the season was we can't score goals, we can't score goals. And if, uh, But if you look at the Leeds game, four goals were scored, five conceded. I think, you know, we've had a couple of injuries at the back and that has really, really hurt us. Probably shouldn't have let go of uh, Morrison. Um, and I think a striker is also needed. Someone that can put the ball in the net. Someone that's the mould of Che Adams. And I think if we can do that, if we can just tighten up a little bit at the back and get someone that can score goals, that can finish chances, because um, that also is a big problem for Blues, then we will do all right and we'll sit comfortably in mid-table and probably our best finish in a couple of years. And, and I think at times we do play really good football and I just still feel like there's a couple of missing pieces of the puzzle uh, that will pull us together. And then we go into the summer and see what happens there. The last team that I'm going to put in mid-table is going to be Blackburn Rovers. They're in really good form at the minute. They're looking like a really good side. But I do think that form is going to be temporary. I do think they're going to settle back down. I think they're hitting a good peak of their form at the minute. But it shows that they're still... They're still nowhere near. I'm going to put them down into just survive. feel like over the course of the season, they're going to slowly drop back down the table. And uh, they're not going to be by the relegation zone, but they're going to be sort of sitting fairly comfortably above it. When you look at Bradley Dak's injury as well, um, I just think he was such a key component to, uh, to Blackburn Rovers' side. And with him being missing for the remainder of the season... I feel like that's going to have a big effect on them. And that's why I think they'll drop down the table a bit. I think they're going to try and find a replacement for him. But I don't think... He's a, he's a hard player to replace. And I don't really think they've got the funds unless they can shift other players out. So uh, that's why I'm going to have him down there. I'm going to pop QPR just ahead of Blues in mid-table. That would make them about 11th place. Um, I think... They're, again, though, they're another team that uh, that you think maybe they could sneak into the playoffs. If they get rid of Easy in January as well, it's about replacing the likes of him. Uh, who can they hold on to? I think they had a really, really uh, good transfer window in the summer. And I think they'll do, they, they, they've got the potential to do well in January as well. Replace Eze and, um, and make a push for it. But... I'm going to have them just sat there. The only reason the only reason that I've put them there is just because of the other teams. So it's difficult for me to put QPR there. I could have them just above, but someone's got to take that spot. And that's oh, I think it's got to be QPR. Now, Brentford is a team that I can definitely, definitely see getting in the playoffs. They've got a really good style of play um, that's been... It's been adapted over a couple of years. They, they're a good side to watch. They've got a great transfer recruitment policy. And uh, I think it's only a matter of time before they get in the Premier League with the way they buy and sell players. And it's something that I think Birmingham City might have started to pick up on. And I feel like our owners probably look at Brentford and think that's the way we want to do things in terms of transfer policy. They might be frustrated that they don't hold on to certain players just for an extra year. I've spoke to Billy the B, who's a Brentford fan as well. Like you can imagine if... Brentford still had uh, Neil Mopai, would they be higher? Would, would they be finishing higher? Uh, but, but they always seem to have a replacement for the players that they let go of. So I think Brentford are going to be one of the teams to look out for in the playoffs. And I might even have them down to win it. I am going to drop Huddersfield down to just survive. But over this side of just survive. And that's so I can put Reading uh, just around here in mid-table. You know, I thought they were going to do a lot better this season. 
But looking at the way they've been playing over the course of the season, I just feel like their season will fizzle out into mid-table mediocrity. I really thought Puskas was going to be the key for Reading. He was linked heavily with Blues in the summer. Ended up going to Reading. Has only scored six goals this season. And uh, I, I think I thought he could have done better. Um, there's been rumours that he already wants to go from there. He wants to leave. He's not happy there. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I just think... Maybe I was putting all my eggs in one basket with him for Reading when I was predicting them to go a bit higher. But that's why I think they're going to settle in mid-table anyway. I don't think they're going to recruit that well in January, but I could be surprised. Swansea are an interesting side this season. I predicted them to get in the top two. I'm not sure why I decided that at the time, but... Um, I think they're going to, you can see their logo now, can't really see it there, but uh, I think they will just miss out on the playoffs, I think they will invest a little bit more in January, but I don't. I just don't think they're going to have what it takes to get into the top six with the, with the quality around them, they've got a really good squad, but the quality of the teams that are currently sat in the playoffs and just outside, I just can't, I can't see Swansea getting in there, that's the thing, I, I say I can't see them getting in there, but there's so many teams where one of them could just sneak in, all you need is a little run of games, but for me, I think they're going to miss out. You know what? No, I'm moving Reading down to just survive, but only just here. You know, it's pretty much mid-table. I'm just trying to even out this uh, this tier maker. Right, next up, it's Bora. I am going to put them in 11th place, which is just ahead of QPR here. You know, they're slowly gaining momentum in the championship. They're an informed team right now, but I think their poor starts to the season is going to hold them back from getting to the playoffs. Um, I could be wrong. If they put a good run together, you never know. They're becoming a hard team to beat. They're grinding out results, 1-0s, 2-1, you know. So, I... I can see them just getting mid-table, maybe maybe up to just missing out on playoffs, but that's where I feel Middlesbrough should be. I feel Wednesday are another team doing brilliantly under our former manager, Gary Monk. Um, I've been I've been debating whether they're going to remain in the playoffs or not. I think they're going to just slip out of it, um, and there's a certain team that I think will get in there, and it's Preston. I think it's going to be a battle between Preston and Sheffield Wednesday for that six place spot on paper they're so so similar i think the goals of stephen fletcher have really helped sheffield wednesday push forward uh, this season i think in the minute on form you would put sheffield wednesday in the playoffs um you know they're sat there currently uh, they look the more informed team but i think sheffield wednesday will have a little bit of a dip it all depends on how uh, how how much money is spent in january whether the right additions are made but i can see preston just just getting in just getting in there uh, maybe it's maybe it's personal preference. Maybe I don't want Gary Monk to get in the playoffs. You might say, but personally, I don't mind. I don't know why it's so hard to actually decide, man. It's difficult. It really is. I just I can see Preston just edging it. They're just gonna have a little sneaky run towards the end of the season and sneak in there. Few more left now, and Hall City are a good football inside. I don't think they're gonna get in the playoffs though. Big question is, can they keep hold of Jared Bowen in the January transfer window? I know a lot of teams are gonna be after him. If he does go, can they replace? him can they replace the goals if they can't they'd be dropping down to mid table perhaps they're still learning their craft at the minute uh, but Jared Darren Bowen's goals are pulling them through and keeping them in contention for the playoff spot and who knows if he does stay there they could probably get in there as well maybe instead of Preston maybe instead of another team another team that I think will just miss out on the playoffs is Bristol City it's going to be an absolutely close one any of these teams man any of these teams could get in there I just don't think they're going to I feel like Preston are going to edge it I feel like Preston are going to edge it. Shoot me. Oh, it's so hard. It's so hard. You know, you never know. If DDU could start picking up a few more goals, potentially they could move up into the playoffs. But I just don't think they have that real firepower um, that, that that's needed to get into the top six. You know, they signed Benica Fobe and uh, it, it seemed like he was going to be amazing for them. Got his knee injury and I feel like that sort of held them back a little bit. But they've done really well to get to where they are. They're just sat outside the playoffs at the minute. And maybe if they can get someone in January to sort of give them that extra firepower, they might be able to sneak into the playoffs. But... I've just got them outside it at the minute. I'm going to put them just ahead of Swansea though. And finally, Cardiff, I am going to pop there to miss out on the playoffs. I just don't think they've got what it takes this season. Cardiff have a lot of players that can score goals. They can score goals from all over the pitch pretty much, but what they are missing is one key striker. They tried to sign Isaac Vassell um, in the summer. They got him. He played 46 minutes for him and I think he's got injured, which is a shame for him. <sighs> it really is, but... I feel like they need to try and sign a striker in the January transfer window if they really want to make a push for the playoffs. But for me, I can't see him getting in it. 
Right now we've got four more spaces to fill. Which ones are going to get the playoff spots and which ones are going to go up automatically? Let me tell you. Currently, you've got West Brom and Leeds sitting in the top two. Uh, we've got Fulham. We've got Forest. I think Forest will get in the playoffs. They've been playing really nice football this season. They had a good start to the season. They're just sitting in the playoffs currently. And, and it does put a bit of pressure on you being sat in there at Christmas because you start thinking about, yes, we're going to get in the playoffs. Well, it, you might say it is better to be under the radar and sneak in there towards the end of the season. Can they hold their ground? I think they're going to slip out of the playoffs and then slip back in right at the end of the season. That's what I'm saying. I think they've got a great footballing style. I think they've got really good players. And as long as they can hold on to some of their key players in January and maybe make some key additions, they'll be okay. They'll get in the playoffs. But they won't win it. They won't win it. I think Brentford will win it. And the final team that are going to go in the playoff is... Not Fulham. I'm putting Fulham in the automatic spots. I'm putting them there. I think Fulham are growing into the season. They had a bit of a slow start, a bit of a blip over Christmas, but they still find themselves in third place at the minute. Their squad is absolutely unreal. If they make a few um, defensive additions in January, I think, and tighten up a little bit at the back, they've got to be an automatic contender. If they hold on to Mitrovic as well, who is already flying as the leading championship goal scorer, they've got to get automatics. All they need is to tighten up. And you might argue that Leeds and Albion have got that. They're more, they're a more complete squad. They're a more complete championship squad. I think West Brom are going to just bottle it a little bit. And that's why I'm going to put Baggies in the playoffs in third place and Leeds in second. I think Leeds have bottled it for so many years in terms of trying to get the top two, trying to win the playoffs or whatever. But... They look a solid squad now. They're scoring goals. Yes, they've got some issues defensively. They're leaking a lot of goals at the minute. But I think those issues will be addressed. I think Bielsa is a quality manager. And I think they will they will get in the second spot. They might have a bit of a squeaky bum time towards the end of the season. Maybe they'll lose a couple of games. Maybe they'll start getting closer to those teams that are pushing for first and second spots. But I think they're going to have enough to see it out personally. I watched them play against Blues. Yes, abysmal defensively at times but I think those issues will be addressed and it's 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 a sign of a good team that will con that will concede that will get pushed back again and again I mean we we, we we equalized three times against Leeds but they still fought back and fought back and it's a sign of a good team it's a sign of a team that want to get promoted and I think in previous Leeds Leeds might have, have, have bottled that they might have crumbled but they showed character and that's what Bielsa can do. Um, I think Baggies, I love Slavin Bilic. I think they've got a quality side. I just I just don't think they're going to be able to hold the fort in terms of the top two. Um, they've had a slight dip in form. I think they'll come back. But I think towards the end of the season, Fulham are really going to push. Um, and they're going to squeeze West Brom out of that top two. So that is my that is my league table. That's my prediction for the end of the season. Yes, it's not too different from how the league is now, but we're halfway through the season. There's a lot that could change, but that's how I think it's going to go. There are going to be a few changes in the playoffs um, and a bit at the top as well, but I think the bottom three is going to be exactly the same. Let me know if you agree down in the comments below. Um, leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you're new, but until next time, I'll see you later.